Hi, my name is Jared Stone, and I am a Senior Technical Curriculum Developer here at Jitterbit. Today, we're going to dive into a tutorial that is part of our Jitterbit Basic series that shows you how to quickly connect to your data systems using the Jitterbit Harmony platform. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to show you how to leverage Jitterbit's update activity for using the Salesforce connector and then create a very basic operation using that connection. A Salesforce update activity updates existing data in a Salesforce endpoint based on the ID of the object in Salesforce. Now, as I go through this build, I'm not going to be necessarily showing you how to configure the endpoints as we've done this in older uh, Jitterbit Basics uh, videos like the Salesforce to FTP as a query. So you can go check that out if you want to see how to build out the endpoints and configure those. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be doing an update for this micro learning. So, you know, many times you may have a current customer or whatnot within your CRM that maybe they have changed a name for whatever reason, maybe a marketing purpose, or maybe uh, they've been bought out by another company and details of that account need to be updated. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So I have this one account, uh, the green pickle in, and you can see some of the, the information there with billing and phone and, and name, of course. But let's just say hypothetically that, that this company is being bought out, okay? And for simplicity's sake, we're just going to be changing the name of this through the update. So let's go ahead and dive into that now. So over in Cloud Studio, here on the design canvas, we're going to start doing the update. So what I'm doing, and, and I'll pop over here to the FTP, we can see the updated record file right there. And basically, uh, this file right here is what I'm going to be updating over in Salesforce. The, the green pickle in is now going to become the red tomato end, okay? So that's what we're going to be updating. So back over in Cloud Studio, we will start this build, okay? so. We want to start by doing the FTP, so connecting to that FTP. Now, in previous uh, micro learnings, we've showed you how to establish the connection to, to maybe like an FTP or Salesforce endpoint. So we're not going to go into that in too much detail, okay? But I will quickly show you where you just populate your host information, your username and password information. Very, very simple there, and then you just test the connection to, to establish that endpoint. But what we're going to be doing is reading. So click into the FTP endpoint and then select read, click and hold that, and then we're going to drag that over into the design canvas, okay? So you can see as I do that, it creates an operation bubble um, where I can first start off maybe by renaming this operation. So maybe we just name it uh, something like SFDC update, okay? So we can then double click into the endpoint to configure the activity. You see the name there. We could rename that if we wanted to. Um, not a huge deal for the tutorial's sake, but here in the get files area is where we want to notate the file that we want to get. So I can just come here and say updated record dot CSV. Click next. Shows schemas there, nothing really, so we'll click finished. And just that simply, that activity is configured. So now what we want to do is come over to the Salesforce endpoint. Okay, if we click into that, you can see over here on the right hand side, I have a lot of different options. Remember, we're doing an update, so we'll just come over to the update option, click, drag, and then drop over to the operation. Okay. We'll go ahead and double click into this to configure the activity. Once again, you could rename uh, this if you wanted to. Next, we need to select the object that we're referencing, which is the account object. And then we'll click Next. Once we click Next, we see the, the data schemas, both request and response for us. And then we'll click Finish. And literally, in just a couple of minutes, I've configured both of those activities. Super simple. So now we just need to make this data communicate with each other. And we do this to the transformation. So I'll take my mouse and hover between 
the FTP endpoint and Salesforce endpoint there. And then what I'll do is see that plus icon or plus block come up where you can then click three little bubbles there and select new transformation. So what I could do is start by renaming this just as a best practice. We always encourage uh, everyone to, to name things in a very informative and descriptive fashion. So, you know, whether you're, you're the one individual maybe working on integrations or you're in a team environment, naming conventions are very, very important for your success. Okay. So here, let's just say, um, SFDC update. Okay. So we have that. And now what we're going to do is go into the define schema option, click that drop down, and then we'll just create a flat file. Once again, you could rename the schema if you wanted to, but here we're just going to add these few little fields manually. So click that add field button. The first field that we'll want, because remember everything is ID based and making sure this update works properly is creating the ID field. Next we'll do company, address, city, state, zip for zip code, country, phone, and then fax. Okay, so as I build that out, you can see over here on the right hand side, the, the structure that's being created. And it's, it's a nice reinforcement uh, as to what you just built, it allows you to kind of double check yourself and make sure that you've built everything properly. So ID, company, address, city, state, zip, country, phone, and fax. I think we're good there. So we'll go ahead and click Save Changes, and then we'll take the flat node and then just drag that to the account, select Auto Map, and you can see that a few fields have automatically mapped. We see the, the ID field there going, and remember auto mapping is based upon the similarity of field name. So we'll see some things auto map. You can see the facts there is auto mapping down to our facts here. And it looks like phone is auto mapped as well. So the rest of these we will have to to manually map, but that's not a big deal. Knowing the data structure and, and the fields, we, we can do this pretty easily. Okay, so the first one we'll start with over here is address. And I see that's going to go down to, uh, where is it at? Billing Street right there. Okay, so we'll take address to Billing Street. And then we will come over and take city to billing city, state to billing state, zip to billing postal code, country to billing country, and then company is going to go all the way down here to name. All right, so company to name. All right, so the left hand side, remember here in the transformation being uh, the FTP that we're connecting to, okay? the right hand side being the, the Salesforce endpoint that we're updating. So we're updating this account, so updating these fields that we're selecting here. So now we'll go ahead and return to the workflow and that has been built, okay? So what I'll do is I'll come over here and deploy this, just sending that data to the cloud. All right, so that was deployed successfully and now we'll just go ahead and run this. Now what you can see here at the bottom, it's been submitted. Uh, I should say the bottom of that operation area. It's been submitted and here in just a moment, it's going to let us know about the success or the failure. You can see the success pops up there, which I could open that up in the logs and detail in and get some information. So this area is really important, especially when you come into something like a failure or, or whatnot within an operation or a process. So that allows you to deep dive into that, figure out what's going on, and then hopefully resolve that.
Okay. So if I were to jump back over here to my Salesforce instance, Green Pickle Inn, remember they were uh, bought out by the Red Tomato Inn. Okay, so we're updating the name. So if I do a quick refresh, you can see that has been updated. Okay, so a really simple um, way to show you some of the power of Jitterbit using that update activity. For deeper training opportunities, please check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. You will need an enrollment key to access the training content, and you can get this information from either your customer success or Alliance Manager. Thanks for joining me for this micro learning. I hope it's shown you both the simplicity and the power of the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio.